Andrew Brown unarmed, shot in back, according to initial reports. This is a topic report, and I did this topic report on this past Saturday, but it's it wasn't one of the more popular stories, but I'm still covering it, especially because I, I want to give some balance and some perspective, because a lot of times you watch this show, and you'll see I'm, I'm constantly going after the whole uh, BLM narrative that cops are systemic racists, we're all going to die, and racism is going to kill us all. Uh, but I, but I want to counter it somewhat. And now I'm, I'm, I'm countering it with caution, because up to this point, no body cam has been released. So I could, this story that you're seeing here, after the body cam, I could change my mind. But as of right now, it just seems like even the police themselves are kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, we, you got us, you got us on this one. This looks like, at least initially, this looks like a report in which it is very possible, highly possible, I'll say at this point, that we actually have a shooting that fits the BLM narrative. And as I said in the last report, or actually in the, in, and if you want to see all these, you can go to our Freedomist White and Gold channel, or you can go to Action Bots and see the, the, the short clips from the show. Uh, when you commit to a moral supremacism, a pure, especially puritanical you know, moral supremacism, and believe me, the right has its own moral supremacisms uh, within it as well as the left. It's just that they don't have the power that the left, the quote-unquote left, has to do anything about it. You commit yourself to untruth. You commit yourself to not facing what actually is. And in this case, the quote-unquote right will be very, very hesitant to face a shooting that is actually possibly a demonstration of the BLM claim that cops are racist or that uh, cops are out of control and that we need fundamental uh, police reform. When we have cops shooting unarmed men in the back, as appears to be the, the, the most likely the, the case here with Andrew Brown, this is a story that in general the right would not be all that inclined to cover to talk about and they will probably incline to find anything they can on Andrew Brown that besmirches his character that demeans him so they don't have to face the ugly quote-unquote truth that okay the BLM may not be right when it comes to the level of insane claims that they make many of the shootings that they claim are unjust or not unjust not all of them but many of them and uh, the claims that systemic racism is so wide it's the number one threat to America and to black people and everybody's dying everywhere. That's insane, too. But there is some truth. There is some truth. If there wasn't some truth, I don't think that it would resonate with the communities that it targets. And it targets communities with fear and hate so that they will hand over. Because this, 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 this handing over of your liberty and freedom, it isn't just white communities that are being compelled to do this. It's black communities as well. And, maybe, and there are plenty of blacks that have already figured this out. And that's why they're standing against BLM. And in this case, we have a story that could very well actually reflect, you know, we do have to ask ourselves some hard questions about uh, how policing has, and I believe, I, I mean, I don't know if there are any actual studies out there that are done by groups that are committed to finding out what is and not serving an agenda, so I don't know. It's hard to tell, fact from fiction. But my strong suspicion is that if you're black in America, you should fear the police. I mean, maybe not to the level, not near to the level that BLM might have you. Uh, fear the police but you should at the very least uh, fear them to the point where you better be extra careful because a black man who makes the wrong decision in an encounter is mo I, I believe theoretically and I don't have the, the facts uh, to back them up nor are there facts to counter this uh, that I've seen uh, that you're much more likely as a black man to be shot and killed by a cop if you don't follow the protocol exactly as you should any deviation from the script puts you much more at risk and i believe that police officers for a number of reasons some of them racist some of them other things uh have built up a stigmatization against the black man especially a young black man and andrew brown appears to be a young black man if you're a black man in america and you see a cop siren behind you you have every reason to be more fearful i believe than a white man and this is something that's difficult for people on the right and even for white people in general to face. And if I'm right, and I think I am, then white people should be 
uh, coming out in in support of black communities to stop this, not, not but without giving over to the BLM hysteria. So the top link here is from the Afternoon Observer: Law enforcement shot Andrew Brown in back. Several in Charlotte area say more police reform needed from the Madison Leader Gazette. Scanner traffic indicates Andrew Brown Jr. was shot in back by North Carolina deputy from CBS 17. North Carolina sheriff's deputy fatally shoots black man while serving warrant. And this is from ABC News. Andrew Brown was unarmed in fatal North Carolina shooting, says the attor- says an attorney here. Is a, 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 I guess attorney for the family, is that? So uh, usatoday.com, three deputies resign, seven on leave after fatal shooting of Andrew Brown Jr. from NPR. Body camera video yet to be released from USA Today. Seven deputies on leave after fatal shooting of Andrew Brown Jr. from ctvnews.ca. And three North Carolina sheriff's deputies fired after shooting a black man from newyorkpost.com. So we got a lot of uh, information to, to put out there, but I wanted to cover this because it was an opportunity for me to give that, that huge caveat to those that are opposed to, quote, unquote, wokeness, BLM, critical race theory, all that stuff, whatever you want to call it, just a, just a knee-jerk, like, absolute reaction against is not really a balanced response. And for we Christians, we are definitely called not to be given over to extreme views one way or another. We're called to be committed to justice wherever it leads, without partiality. That means we don't, we're not partial to the poor or the rich. We're not partial to any race, gender, group, or otherwise. We seek the truth and justice, not what fits our particular narratives. We don't walk in fear. We walk in the love of the Lord, not the fear uh, of, of man. And so on that front, I say be, be, be cautious before you throw in with any, with any claim one way or another. 